All right, guys, welcome to another video from Tech Tanks. Um, this is going to be following our CEH version 11 um, series that we're doing right now. Um, this system, uh, or I'm sorry, this video is going to be focusing on hacking into a web application slash web server. Um, it's going to be demonstrating, um, doing some enumeration, checking how the file, what files and directories are um, available, things like that. We're going to do a little bit of reverse engineering on some Java files. And you're also going to see poor access control configuration on the account, on some of the accounts on the web server. So let's go ahead and jump into this. This video should be pretty quick, maybe 20 minutes max. But anyway, we're going to just run a basic and map scan because I do want to show you. Um, um, how to do a banner grabbing without using Nmap, if for whatever reason that tool is not available to you. Um, so anyway, we have this here. And as you can see, HTTP, SSH, FTP, these are all open. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is check out the um, HTTP. I'm gonna go ahead and run a quick banner grab. Now there's two ways to do this. If you wanna see the whole web page and everything that's available, uh, you can do a get HTTP, guess the version 1.1, 1.0, and then you're going to do host, and then we just provide whoever's hosting. In this case, it's a hack the box, it's the IP address. Press enter twice. Okay, don't worry about all this. What we care about for the banner grabbing is seeing, you know, what kind of server the ru is running it, what kind of system, and it's right here, okay? So we know it's an Apache 2.4.18 and Ubuntu system. Now there's another way to do this, kind of the, the faster way. Give it a bad request and that's what you get. Okay, you still get the same information right here. And yeah, so we know we're running against an Apache system being hosted on Ubuntu, or I'm sorry, an Apache server. So let's go ahead and check out what we got. Okay, so we'll just go to HTTP, well, okay. HTTP, 10, 10, 10, 37. Don't need to give it a port. Okay. Blocky craft. All right, this is WordPress. Yep, there it is, WordPress. Um, we have our login, all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you guys um, pretty cool tool for uh, enumerating a WordPress um, here in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and open the login screen on a different web page or tab rather, sorry. Um, and check out this. We have a notch user looks like. Okay, so let's do a couple things here. Um, pull this up. Let's make this somewhat symmetrical. There we go. All right, so this is my preferred um, directory brute force script, um, dirsearch.py. Uh, obviously, it's a Python script, specifically Python 3. I'm pretty sure can't run on Python 2. But anyway, um, I really like this one, so I'm going to use this. But you have, of course, Go Buster, Dir, Dir Buster, especially if you like the GUI interface, Dir Buster is kind of an option. We'll go over those in another video. Um, but let's go ahead and just start kind of checking out some of these um, directories that are available. Let's see, wordless. Uh, Durbuster directory. So I'm going to just use the standard uh, list. Well, this is pretty standard for me anyway. Um, when I'm doing a hack the box, usually you'll find everything in here. It's a pretty good list. Um, you can control the thread count. 200 is kind of my default to put in there. I got that from actually Durbuster on their GUI. You can hit go faster, something like that, and it bumps it to 200 threads. 
So, and then we can tell it's running PHP. So I'm going to tell it, you know, search for PHP files. Text files are always good. HTML files. Um, if it's running Java, search for, um, you know, Java files is always good. But we don't know for sure, so I'm going to just start with this. Um, and then while that's running, let's go ahead and run a WP scan on this. And kind of see if it can tell us what version we're running. Okay, and WP scan, it's, uh, it's a great little tool to do a whole lot. It even does, a, like if you give it an API token, which I did not provide, um, you can get 25 daily requests from here. Just register. It's worth it. Um, but it can actually tell you, um, you know, if it's running certain uh, plugins, things like that. And then it'll tell you these are vulnerabilities associated with it. Um, but just running the basic scan is fantastic because it'll tell you, you know, if it can, it tells you the um, server. It'll tell you what version of WordPress is running, which is what I really care about. Um, which 4.8 tells you it's insecure. You can also have it enumerate users, but what I have found is usually it's pretty easy to find the users yourself. Now there's multiple posts um, on here, and if you start seeing you know multiple names popping up, by all means just have this check all of it for you. But there's only the one post that I've seen so far by this user, so I don't see the point in having it run a user check on it. Um, so we're going to just stick with Notch's going to be our, our victim here. Now, looking at this, it's only a quarter of the way done, but well, a little over. But this looks interesting, the PHP my admin, and I do like to always check plugins, kind of see what's running. So let's go ahead and check out PHP my admin. So we have another login screen. I don't want to just start, you know, throwing random things at it just yet. So I'm going to come back to that later if necessary. So let's check plugins. We have a jar file, two jar files. Okay, so let's go ahead and save these. And we'll look into see what these are. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and make another directory in here. I like to try to keep my stuff organized. So let's move downloads. Let's see, the first one is blocky move it here and then we'll do the same with grief prevention not sure on that one okay so we got them both here um let's start with the blocky one only because system's called blocky website is blocky craft i'm seeing a pattern so running jar um the XF flags, it actually uh, unpacks it for you. Um, I guess let's check out com first. Um, all right, my first plugin. We have a class file. So, fun thing here, as you can see, um, where this is a um, you know, a doc class file from a uh, for Java, it's already basically compiled and things like that. So it's a lot of nothing through here. But we can read plain text that's all still in here, um, which you know we see root. And anytime I see any kind of username, so if I were to see notch here, or definitely if I see root, and then I see something like this following, I assume that's a password. But there's a way we can kind of check into this and hopefully get a little bit more information um using this it'll actually um reverse engineer for us a little bit um and we get to read the comments which is what we're seeing here um and notice we have string root which is the sql user and then we have that other string that we saw which is the sql password so we have a username and a password um 
Now there's a few things we can do with this. We saw a few login screens. One was for um, you know, the WordPress. Then we have one for the PHP My Admin. Um, so we try those out. And then of course we also have SSH. So we have three areas where we could try this out. Um, I'm down to try root first. Uh, let's just copy, paste. Okay, what if we do notch? Because we know that's a user. No good. Okay, so that's not going to go anywhere. Uh, PHP, my admin. Root. Yeah, we're logged in. Okay. So we could definitely look into taking advantage of this. Okay. So before I go any further than that, um, I want to try SSH. And let's see, it was root that we had used. So let's try root first. Paste in the password. Permission denied. And that's not going to happen then. Okay. Let's try notch. Paste in the password. Okay, we're in. Now, I'm not going to close this out just yet because there is a possibility we're not going to have um, privilege escalation options inside of here. We probably are, but there's a possibility we're not going to. So I would definitely want to keep this open because according to this, we're root. So a um, couple things we're going to do. First of all, um, get that user.txt. Okay, submit that to uh, hack the box right there. Okay, um, I'm not going to worry about submitting it. I have already done this box, but um, anyway. Number one thing, and actually there's there's two things you should do instantly right off the bat before you go anywhere else. We have a password, first of all, so we definitely want to see if this person is a pseudo user. Now, according to this, looks like yes, um, but there's a better way to show it because you won't necessarily always be able to identify that they're a pseudo user through this. Um, but you could always do like the sudo dash L command and then provide your password if it asks for one, and it'll tell you what pseudo privileges you have. The other thing you should be doing is checking what um, files have um, suit permissions. So basically, um, you wanna be able to find out what can people run as the pseudo user um, on the system. So I'll show you both of them real quick here. So we'll just do sudo l. We want the password, paste that in there. So I can tell you right now, we're, we're already done with this system. Um, this is the poor access control configurations that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Um, you have, you know, your user on the, uh, for the, for the web server and they have all pseudo privileges on here. That is, a horrible configuration. You definitely don't want to do that. If your account is directly associated with the web server or web application, you should be running that account with minimal um, privileges, like least privileges necessary to, you know, complete the tasks that are needed. Um, simply for um, thoroughness, we will go ahead and check for anything that has um, sort of privileges on here specifically type F um, and then we're going to just throw any errors into the dev dot or dev null so all of these execute or all these files here it can be executed with the suit privileges but not really necessary because again running sudo we can get a root shell just by doing this and now I'm root Okay, so once again, guys, um, the, the poor setup was, I mean, these, these jar files, they uh, had comments in them for username and password. We were able to SSH right into the system and then 
we were able to use pseudo privileges to just instantly get a bash shell running on here. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could do this, but now that we have the root, we can add a user in for um, you know continuing our our hack and just maintaining access. So hopefully that was a good demonstration for you guys. Um, you know I'll try to pop up another video here in the next week or so, and just kind of keep demonstrating more and more for the CEH version 11.